Father, we bless your name because of the wonderful revelation that Jesus Christ is the way. Is the way out of darkness into light. Is the way out of confusion into peace. Is the way out of doubt into faith. Father, we are praying that every one of us will find Jesus to be the way this day in Jesus' name. As to teach us the word. May the Holy Holy Spirit apply the truth to our hearts in Jesus' name. <inaudible> Through this teaching, <inaudible> encourage us, <inaudible> inspire us, <inaudible> lead us along the way, <inaudible> and help us to be our best for you. <inaudible> in Jesus' name we pray. <inaudible> in our series of teachings on marriage, we have already seen that God's plan is that everyone will be happily married. Because the word of God says marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Both the Old and the New Testament show us that marriage is God's own institution. And we have seen that a time comes in the life of a man or a woman when he grows to that age, he begins to pray and to think seriously on who do I marry. And we have also seen that at such a time, it's important for the believer to pray. Last week we talked on how to make the right choice. How to know the will of God. And that message is available on cassette for those who need to listen over and over to understand the various points therein. Well, we are not little children. You understand that when you know the will of God and you have informed the lady or the, you have now come into agreement between the man and the woman. You don't the same day, you know, say, come to my house now, we are husband and wife, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You have known the will of God. You have told the other person of the will of God. You are going on a journey. The way is still ahead of you. And so you need to do some necessary things. There are many things to prepare. If you don't understand that, let me just remind you. You know the place you are working now. It's not the very day you got the letter of appointment that you started. Most who are looking for work. Then you went to a particular place. You made the contact. Then they didn't say immediately, okay, start work. They said, okay, we'll be sending information to you after interview. Then you were waiting at home. Eventually you received a letter of appointment. That you are now employed. And then they give you a date convenient for them. Whereby you will come and start. That time between the time you received the letter and the time you started the work. is waiting time. Planning time. Our students at school, they do the same thing. Now they want to get to a school so they can study. There are various schools, there are many schools. Then they decide they want to go to this particular school. They take the necessary tests and examination. And 
It is not that day that they start to become students in that school. Eventually, when they are admitted to that school, they send letters to them or information. You have been admitted to this school. That does not mean that that very day he has now become a student. There is still a waiting time, a planning time, a preparation time. What happens uh, for going to school, what happens for seeking employment is the same thing that happens in marriage. You have known the will of God. You have talked together. The sister has said, yes, I know it to be the will of God. We don't marry that day. There is a waiting time, a planning time, a preparation time. That time we call the time of courtship. And it is before marriage. Understand me. When you have got your letter of appointment, in a place of work, you don't immediately begin to get salary. You don't immediately begin to carry about an identity card. Look at me. I'm a worker in such and such a place. No. You have appointment letter. You are still waiting. You have not started. When you have got admission to a school, you don't immediately begin to answer students. You are not yet a student there. You don't go to their cafeteria and begin to eat. You don't go to the hostel and begin to sleep. You don't go to the library and begin to use their library book. Because you have not resumed, you are still waiting. And at the same, the same thing on marriage. When we have known the will of God, now it is not the time that already, already now we are enjoying the benefits of the marriage. We are still in the waiting period, waiting time, planning and preparing. And this is what we are going to talk about today. I will be talking on the period of courtship. The points for consideration. And the problems of conflict. Period of courtship, points of con for consideration and problems of conflict. You know the you are going to do, you must set goals. And in marriage, there is an ultimate goal which you are looking for. There is a reason why you want to get married. When two people are coming together, the man has his own goal in life, plan in life. The woman has her goal in life, her purpose for living. They are separate. Sometimes those goals are not harmonized together. The time of courtship or the period of courtship is to come together. You tell me your goal in life, I tell you my goal in life. We harmonize them to become family goals. It's a time of discussion, a time of sharing, a time of looking at where are you going, where am I going. Now we are going to take the same road. Will the same road lead to the different places we wanted to go? And the goals may be physical, material, mental, social, and spiritual. It's not something we can settle in only one day. If you are going to go on a long journey, you need a serious preparation. And you need to 
observe the rules along the way. As to the goals you ought to have in your in getting married. In um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. We must plan on that verse. Because now you are coming together as companions, not competitors. The person that you want to get married to is a partner, not property. And the Lord is saying it is not good that the man will be alone or for the woman to be alone. And in Psalm 144, your goal should include what we are going to read now as well. Your thinking and your planning should be directed to this as well. Psalm 144 verses 12 to 14. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. You want to build up a home where the children that will come to the world through you will be able to develop. Where their lives will really be fulfilled and satisfied. That we need planning, we need to discuss it together. In verse 13, that our gunners may be full affording all manner of soul that our sheep may bring four thousands and ten thousands in our street. Kia ka waki o leku ki o ma apuni li o niru rui shura ki a wakutan wakutan wakio ma bi ekbe ekbe ron a ti ekbe ekbe ron ekbe ekbe ron mewa ni igboro wa. That's talking of our profession, the work we do as a marriage. Ele yin soni pa ishe ti anche le yin taba shekbe ya wutan. Well if the wife has been working somewhere, the husband working another place, how do we harmonize our goal? How do we coordinate our lives together, different lives coming together so that my work is prospering, your work is prospering, and everything is to the fulfillment of the goal of the family? That our oxen may be strong to live that there be no breaking in or going out that there be no complaining in our streets now it's saying how do we plan our families so that this is the result we shall get in the marriage after the marriage those who have come before us into the world they tell us if you fail to plan you plan to fail if you want to build a good house there is need for planning if you want to raise a good family there is need for planning in John chapter 17 verse 4 I have glorified thee on earth I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do your main purpose in life is to glorify God and so you must plan how do I fulfill the glory of God in this marriage that we are getting into as a contract in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 Nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband Shuban, ni tori agbere ki olukuluku ki o ni aya tire ati ki olukuluku ki o si ni oko tire 
That's part of the purpose, the goal in marriage. And that should, your plan should be included, should include that. How do we come into this marriage contract and become purer through that marriage contract? Become closer to God. Become totally free from all women and all other men. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 Two are better than one Because they have a good reward for their labor Now you see these goals are not isolated As I've told you the woman has her own goal The man has his own goal And these goals must be accommodated together Harmonized together Put together, mixed together, so that two goals become just one goal. Come back to Amos chapter 3, verse 3. No doubt you have heard this verse before. What does it say? Can two work together except they be agreed? Listen to me. Can two work together except they be agreed on where they are going? You know, some people feel that if you have prayed and you have known the will of God, that is all. What's your goal? What's her goal? Can you work together on the same road with somebody without knowing both of you where you are going? Can two work together except they be agreed on when they are going? Can two work together except they be agreed on why they are going? Can two work together except they be agreed on how, in what way, what means or methods are they going to use in their going? Can two work together except they be agreed on what they are going to get? where they are going. That's why we come together for planning during the coaching. Where are we going? Are we in agreement? If we're in agreement, we are getting ready for the marriage. When are we going? Are we in agreement? If we're in agreement, we are ready now to prepare for the marriage. Why have we come together? Why are we going to where we are going? If we're in agreement, then we're getting ready to go where we're going. How are we going? What method? What means? What road are we taking? If we're in agreement on how, we're getting prepared to really start in the journey. By the way, what are we going to get where we're going? So that it becomes profitable. If we're in agreement on what we're going to get, so you're asking where, when, why, how, and what. That's what that verse is saying. Can two work together except they be agreed? That's why the courtship period is very necessary and very important. The, the goals we are setting must be definite. Practical, not theoretical. It must be something possible and feasible, not just ideal. In Proverbs chapter 24 verse 27 Proverbs 24 verse 27 
Prepare thy walk without. Make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. He's telling all that there is good, there is need for planning. Proverbs 19, verse 2. Proverbs 19, verse 2. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Notice they say if you are in a hurry, you don't know where you are going, why you are going, when you are going. And uh, what you are going to get over there, you just rise up and you take your journey. You are too much in a hurry that that is not wise. Proverbs 29 verse 20 Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words There is hope, there is more hope of a fool than of him You know planning time or preparation time or courtship time is for something positive, not something destructive. My brother and my sister, it's not the time that we go and get books on the anatomy of the woman. And then you go to studying biology again. And we say, brother, how are you getting? on your coaching <laughs> while I'm following the syllabus of school sir the biology I know now about women I never knew it before I am now start, I'm starting to know that uh, you know in the book they told me that uh, women have two legs and one nose and one mouth and two eyes I'm really getting knowledge <laughs> It is not the time to go into books of anatomy and be studying about a woman or about a man. That's too early. Yes, yes. Coco, last year, we see my wife when we go to the house. Oh, never a yara. Coco, it's a bit of a yara. Oh, Benny, Ele, it's a yaju. It is not the time to be studying and reading books on methods of intimate relationship between a man and a woman. Yes, yes. Coco, last year, my wife when we see my wife, never a bash it. Oh, Larry, oh, Coco, oh, Coco, it's you, Benny. And I told you before when a student has got a letter of admission he does not immediately go to the school and be living there there is a resumption date he must wait for that date before starting to live in that school man and woman do not start living together sleeping together eating together, doing everything together uh, before the real day of wedding. The people of the world do it. But we are told in Ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 8 for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. The unbelievers go into many acts of immorality and atrocities 
at the time of their own culture. For the child of God, it must not be so. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 8, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which ye have received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we have, we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. In First Timothy chapter five, verse twenty-two, lay hand suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. The part I want you to emphasize and understand during your courtship is this: keep thyself. In order to keep yourself pure, I want to give you seven points. Points for consideration during the time of your coaching. I told you you need to plan together. Harmonize your goals in life. Discuss and share your ideas together. You are getting prepared for the marriage. And that will necessitate you having to sit together, meet together, talk together, share together. I'm giving you seven points now to guide you in the times you are meeting together. The seven points come under these words. One, the place. Two, the posture. Three, the purity. Four, the purity. Five, the prayer. Six, the presence. And seven, the praises. One, the place of meeting. When we're meeting together to discuss. To share ideas together. To reveal our goals and harmonize our goals. The place of meeting must not be secret. Must not be dark. Must not be behind closed locked doors. It, it must be open where other people can see you. Because you see that devil is not asleep. If you put petrol and fire in the same room and you lock the door, you can tell what will happen. You know when these tankers are carrying petrol? In the tanker. When we meet them on the road, there is no danger. When they pass somewhere, and I pass by the tanker of petrol, there is no danger. But if you Open that tanker. Put that uh, petrol inside a bowl. Put it in my hand. And they say, carry it home. And I carry the petrol home. And I lock the door. And there is no nepal light. And then I'm using candle to see. That petrol is no more in the tanker. It's now in the bowl. Inside my room. If I burn up before morning, you can tell what happened. When you see that sea sign, the fellowship, there is no danger. Like you see the tanker on the road. When you see the sea sign, the choir, there is no danger. Like you see the tanker just uh, somewhere parked on the road. But when that sister becomes to you the will of God, and that 
petrol is put in your hand, in your bowl. And then you carry that petrol inside. And you and that sister, you are together on that closed door. If she becomes pregnant, the following month we know what has happened. That is why when you are considering your coaching, it is very major that the point of consideration must take into account the place of meeting. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Give neither give place to the devil. If you give the devil an inch, he will go a mile. In Second Corinthians chapter two, verse verse eleven. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven. Let Satan to get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Take that point, it will do you good. Make sure that the place is not secret and dark and behind closed doors. Make sure it is open. Number two, the posture. And when you are meeting together, the posture of the man and the posture of the woman must not advertise any sin that is tempting or suggestive. Your posture must not play on the other person's emotion or feeling. Your dressing must be normal and modest when you are meeting together. Otherwise, you may become a stumbling block to the brother. Or the brother can become a stumbling block to the, to the sister. In Romans chapter 14, verse 13, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Nitori na ma se je ki atun ma da ara wa lejo mo sugbon e kuku ma se idajo yi ti eni keni ma se fi ohun ikose tabi ohun idigolu si ona arakunrin re. First Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Corinthi ki ni ori kejo ese ikesan. But take it lest by any means this liberty of yours Become a stumbling block to them that are weak. You know, some uh, young men and some young women will say, after all, we have liberty. Uh, Maybe we have known the will of God, after all. And after all, we are saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost. And of course, uh, those in the Bible say, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That same Bible is warning you, take it, let by any means, in any way, by any method, for whatever reason, this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to your brother or to your sister. Number three. The discussion will be random and haphazard. There will be confusion if there is no order in what you are discussing. If it is just you say, let me see you tomorrow. No plan of what to say. No plan of what to discuss. No problem to handle and to solve. 
But you see, there should be priority. You write them down. You order them. So, so that the discussion or the sharing will be orderly. That saves time. And it puts things in proper perspective. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm reading there in verse 14. Let all things be done decently and in order. The next point is purity. You know, if you if you're meeting together, as I told you before, according to First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-two, we must avoid even the appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Avoid anything that will bring temptation. I told you that if you give the devil a little chance, he will he'll totally possess the situation. And how many people have, uh, you know, said to the sister, well, uh, after all, it's just a little kiss. And a little kiss resulted into pregnancy. You see, purity is very, very important. It is not the time to be behaving like the world. With no fruit of the spirit, no temperance, no self-control. Let's move on. Then there should be prayer. You need to ask God for yourself. You know, there are many problems that come on as you are planning. Problems of the parents of the man or the parents of the woman. And there are problems in you know getting enough finance to be able to even settle the home. Sometimes uh, the lady has had a child before before the marriage. That's when she was in the world. And you know, we need to bring up all these problems and handle them with prayer. And sometimes it is the man that is having a problem. And so prayer is very important when you are meeting together. You're asking for help. You're asking for wisdom. You're asking for guidance in planning. And then, you know, there are times you just forget what you ought to remember. You're asking for the Lord to remind you what you are likely to forget. You're asking that God will give you favor with the parents. And you're asking that God will keep you on the path leading to your goal. James chapter 1. Reading from verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. But let him ask in faith. But let him ask in faith. We go from the prayer to the presence. You know this is a journey you have not gone before. You are going to a place you have never been to before. You want to do something that is totally new to you. And you need the presence of God in your planning, in your sharing, in, your, in, your, in everything that you do. You cannot go further except you have the presence of God. If sin comes in, you lose the presence of God. If quarreling comes in, you miss the manifestation of the presence of God. Exodus chapter 33 verses 14 and 15 and he said my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. 
And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up thence. At the time you are planning the marriage, you need the presence of God. All along the way, the presence of God is indispensable. You cannot walk and eat. Go any step without the presence of God. Now if you are in courtship, this may surprise you. In Psalm 150, verse 6. Psalm 150, verse 6. You know, sometimes you come together now you are sharing, you are discussing. And the discussion has not been very orderly. There has been argument, disagreement, and conflict. And you know, some people, the way they end up the whole meeting, the sister will start crying. Take her bag and then walk away. Since I come back, we have not finished. No, 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 you are talking to me like that. I didn't know this is how you are. And then she would go. And then the brother will write a letter. Ah, my sister, I thought you were safe. Why are you acting like this? The sister will write back and you are accusing me. I thought you were saved. I didn't know you are a devil. And you know they never praise God. No, not at all. Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The only people that are excused not praising God are those who are not breathing. There may be problem, there may be conflict. There may be misunderstanding or there may be disagreement. It's only when you stop breathing you are excused from praising God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Now that means when you come together you look at the place and the place is safe. It's open. Your posture, your dressing, your attitude to one another is uh, not tempting anybody. In your discussion, there is good and wonderful priority, orderly discussion. As you meet together, there is purity that undergirds, underlines, and supports everything you are doing and saying. And the Lord is granting you help and wisdom and guidance and favor because you are praying. And the presence of God is going with you. And then you are praising the Lord every time. I quickly want to handle problems of conflict. We've looked at uh, the period uh, of uh, courtship. We have looked at points for consideration. We are not looking at problems of conflict. Please understand that uh, even though you are believers, you have known the will of God. And you are so happy and joyful, we knew the will of God. Let me give you this revelation. There will be conflict when you meet together, when you discuss together together. You say, is that because the person is not spiritual? The more spiritual the person is, the more conflict you have. You say, is that because the person is not very pure and holy? If it were possible for that partner of yours to be an angel, the more she becomes pure, the more he becomes pure, the more problem and conflict you have. Maybe it's not consecrated. The more consecrated you see, the more problem you have. Let me explain to you. You know if I were to marry an angel, if, you know if God were just to say now, 
you are so wonderful. I just don't want you to marry a human being. I'm going to do a special favor. Have, have this angel. Oh, my baby, I'm going to do a special favor. 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 I mean, human beings have their problems. Oh, my baby, I'm going to do a special favor. Here is an angel. Get married to this angel. I'm going to do a special favor. If that were possible, from the first day of courtship to the last day of courtship, there will be conflict. That angel is too pure for me. Well, see mistake in every word I say. If I sleep, that is too much, he doesn't sleep. If I am tired, he's rebuking me. Why are you tired? It's an angel, I'm a human being. I will have to say God. God have this angel, but give me a human being. You know when two people come together to really understand we have different backgrounds, different understanding, different parents, different ideas in life, and different levels of consecration. When you take a note from a Volkswagen, you want to fix it into a piece Joe vehicle, there will be conflict. But if you take a spare part from an aeroplane and you want to fit it into a vehicle, into a car, there will be conflict. And that's why we have conflicts at the time of courtship. You know, sometimes the partners are torn between the ideas of the parents and the partners and conflict will resolve. What, what actually makes the problem very bad is if someone among them or both of them have selfishness or pride or harshness or impatience. Now when I talk of selfishness you say, are we not talking of Christians? Yes, we are talking about Christians. Cool down. You know, sometimes say, I am a Christian, he is a Christian. We want to meet together to share ideas. The, the, the brother has sheets full of what he wants to discuss. The sister also has points she wants to discuss. We sit down. The man wants to talk. The woman wants to talk. Does not want to give chance to the other partner. While one is still talking. Wait, wait, wait. I remember something. That's selfishness. And that thing will bring conflict. Or sometimes it is pride. Not the man doesn't want the woman to know that she has any area of ignorance at all. But and impatience, insensitivity to the needs of other people, to the needs of the other partner, or unwholesome speech, or criticism. Oh, sister, why are you talking like that? We said we'll meet at 10 30. Look at it now, this 11 o'clock. Are you not a Christian? In fact, if you continue like this, I don't know how this courtship will go. If you know you are an angel, why didn't you go to heaven to marry? Didn't you know that that person is a human being? And can sometimes be late. And sometimes may not even understand exactly what you are saying. Let us drop all the criticism. If there is the withholding of truth from one another, there will be conflict. And to solve these problems, we need to understand something. Now, let me talk especially to the men. You see, we men were ignorant, we don't know what we're ignorant. The ladies, the sisters, the women, they are very, very intelligent and sharp and observant. When you say you are meeting together, the sister 
has seven questions in her mind. She won't tell you those questions. That question, the questions are inside. When you meet together, she hears what you say. She sees your attitude. She sees your action. She's watching everything. And all she's looking for is answer to the seven questions I have in my mind. If you if you talk, she may reply. She may even test you and uh, you know ask you a question that looks like a foolish question. That's not the real question. The real question is internal. This one she brought out is a trigger to make you to make her know whether you will answer the internal unspoken or written question. What are those questions? In what way does he respect me? That's a question in her mind. And she's watching you. If you run too fast, she won't talk. But you have not answered that question. If you say come at seven o'clock, you may deliberately come at eight o'clock. To know your answer to this question, in what way does she does he respect me? If you say we're going to do the marriage in August, she is going to say, why not we do it in October? She is not disagreeing with you. It's only triggering you to know in what way does he respect me. And you don't know she's asking any questions. Oh, she might come very big. She just blasts. She just continues to talk. And he marks wrong on that question. Already you are in for trouble. Question number two. How does he treat my parents? And he will not he will not tell you directly. But she has the unspoken on written question at her. Question 3. How will he treat me after we are married? Question 4. Does he have any habits that annoy? Is he willing to change? Question 5. How committed is he to wait until marriage before asking for sexual intimacy? Question say Is he totally committed to God? Is he serious with the Christian faith? Is he totally committed to the word of God? Is he committed to the people of God? Question 7 Why am I afraid to tell him who, I'm, who I am? You think that sister has told you everything she is? No, sir. All the time of courtship, she is scratching the surface. She is looking at your response. Is she able to handle my personal, private knowledge gracefully? And you don't know that she's asking all these questions in her heart. So you just be, you just behave like Esau. Oh, let's go. You run, you fly, you read Bible, you pray, you quote Bible, and all the time she is saying, does she respect me? Does he really love me? How is he going to treat me when we marry? And because you refuse to answer those questions with your action, with your expression, she never is really able to yield. At time it has gone, but let me show you how to resolve your conflicts. If the conflicts are already there. Number one, be honest with yourself. Be willing to admit when you are at fault. Have humility and ask for forgiveness from the partner when you are wrong. If you read Matthew 7, 1 to 5, that will clear you. Number two, never try to hurt or revenge. Respect, trust, and admir admiration must abide between both of you. Number three, 
ju pe e ibo okan ara yin wa la arin eyin mejeji as romans chapter 12 verse 17 to 19 eyi ni romu ri keji la lati ese iketa di logun de number so 3 so when a desire to strike back comes to you stop eketa nigbati e nigbati a niyan lati gbe so pada to ba ndide dawo duro gracefully and carefully withdraw all your statement an old attitude that is going to bring any further disagreement. Eh, bo bo, until le Freddy dey know that is that is sorry. Tabi that is shame. Come, you know, you want that word, bro. Pray and let Jesus help you to regain your perspective and restore your self control. But do as Jackie Jesus Christ if you da eh, you could ani ni jano re ati tera ni lori ba re pada. Always learn to say this important word. It was when you let the copy wash so I want to say. Whether you feel like or not. Yala ofe tabi okofe. Just eh, I know how to say. It and say it in faith. Anytime there is trouble, anytime there is conflict, whether you are the one that is wrong or you are or is the one that is wrong, just learn to say, I forgive you. Now you need to do that properly. Okay, I forgive you and let me rest. I forgive you. You know there is a difference. When there is trouble, the tendency is to say, I forgive you like if a lion is talking. Be gentle. Be loving. Let the fruit of the spirit come out when you are saying, I forgive you. Now in communication, when you are talking to one another, yourself is what I'm saying really true. I really have the facts on what I'm discussing with my partner. It's what I would like to say profitable to my partner. Will it help him, build him, develop him or will it hurt him and discourage him? Is this the proper time to say it? Or should I wait for a better time when you will be ready to listen to me. Is my attitude right? Am I saying it in love? Are the words which I will use the best possible way of saying what I want to say? Have I prayed about this matter that I want to discuss with my partner? Am I trusting God to help me? Let's eventually end up with Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5 and verse 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And the, the going might have been rough for you in your courtship. But you know if we trust the Lord, whatever is wrong, the Lord will bring them back. Whatever we have lost, we will regain again. If you are not already a child of God, why not tell the Lord? Make me a child of God. Forgive all my sins. Save my soul. And all these things will become possible. Rise up and let us pray. Submit yourself to the Lord. Surrender yourself to the Lord. Wholeheartedly give yourself to the Lord. If you are already in courtship and you have made mistakes already, why not tell the Lord about it? If you have known the will of God, now you can see how to have real proper courtship. If you are already married, and you not apply all these things we have discussed now, we have seen from the word of God in your marriage. Tell the Lord to help you. Tell the Lord to assist you. Lord, pass the grace. And He will see you through. If we obey His word, we will reap the benefit of obedience.